Hi guys, it is World Watercolour Month and I, today I thought we'd do something a little bit extra for, you know, to celebrate. And so we're going to look through some of the palettes that I've made. So some of these are ones I've made for family members, some, I ha oh, some they've made for themselves. So, and you can see here, I'll just show you through my two that I, I mainly use on the channel and I do have videos for, uh, you know, swatching out all those colours. But in celebration of this month, I thought it would be nice. I can't actually follow on the prompts every day, uh, but you can. You can go over to World Watercolor Month and check out the daily prompts, and then you can follow along over there. Uh, but I thought it would be nice since we're celebrating World Watercolor. Well, since we're celebrating watercolors this month, I thought it would be nice to talk about creating palettes not only for ourselves but also for others. Now, this isn't something we have to do. It's not part of the World Watercolor Month thing, but I just thought it would be nice to show you and to share with you in case you did want to kind of celebrate by sending some watercolors out into the world for someone else to be, grow to love. So this is a palette that I created for my sister for her birthday. It took me five months to collect all the colors and I wanted it to be sort of a celebration of her and... Um, Colors that not only she loves but colors that remind me of her. This is another one that I made for someone So again, I'm just showing you diff a different variety different ways that you can uh, create palettes and you know uh, Add different colors in I think it's a really lovely thing when someone gets a palette off you and the palette you know the colors remind you of them and it's really nice for them to experience that and to feel like you've cur curated something just for them and you've created it and you've thought of them really personally. So you don't have to do something this extravagant. I'll show you a couple of different um, options later on in the video, but I'm just kind of showing you some things that I've done. So this one is for my brother. So we made this a few years ago. He hasn't really used it, but I wanted to make one just in case he ever does. Um, so he loves Van Gogh and this is just off Amazon again and it's just a little palette. He loves browns and greens and earth colors so I put that one together for him. Uh, he loves painting miniatures and you know Warhammer that kind of stuff so uh, he did want some watercolors and he kind of looks into art but he sort of generally focuses on the miniatures so but I think he really enjoys that palette. And so here are a couple in um, some travels notebooks and I do have videos for these and how I made them so I'll link those below but um, back to the watercolors I made for my brother for a second sometimes it's really nice to create something for someone they may not necessarily use it but they do savor it they do enjoy having it and knowing that it's there and you know one day they may pick it up or it just might always be a treasure that they have so I just wanted to say that, you know, don't uh, sort of let the fact that you are not sure if they'll use it or not stop you from creating it or making one for someone because I'm sure they'll love it anyway. Okay, so back to where we are. So this is a uh, travels notebook that I created from um, some leather that I bought off Etsy. It's from Peggy Sue also, and I'll link the video. It's got all the links below that video. Um, and you can see here I've put a palette in the middle of it. So I actually have a whole video of just taking this away on a travel. And it's quite a nice video. So I'll link that below and you can see it actually in action. But this palette here, I've used the Neo Color 2s and I've just um, scribbled them, sort of drawn them straight on there. And that leaves you a palette of watercolor basically that you can use. So this is a really fun one. I put this just on an elastic on this in this travels notebook and you can pull it in and out like in the video I show you pulling it in and out on the plane and being able to use it at the airport and things like that. And you can see this is a very monotone palette as well. So it's just the sort of pinks, apricots, yellows, greys uh, and those are colors I always gravitate towards but I'm just showing you here how you can use it just quickly.
And so you can see as well with the Neo Color 2s, you could use gelatos as well there. And I have redrawn those squares on several times so you can keep filling up that palette. And like I said, you can use gelatos and it is just a really easy, fun way to create a kind of travel palette. Or you could create like a little card palette to send to somebody that way. So you could, you know, instead of using watercolors, you could use gelatos or neo color twos, whatever you have, and just um, create a little card and a palette and just send a card to someone. I did put, and so I did put a second glaze on that, and that is what it, uh, the you know, the neo color twos come out like after you use them like that, and then. I'm just kind of flipping through. These are a few things that you see me do on the plane in this notebook. And then I think the main palette that I used on the trip is this one. So what I did is I got a the Daniel Smith 238 dot cards. You can get them on Amazon. And I had pretty much exhausted most of the colors, but there were a few colors and a few little bits left. So I basically just cut that apart grabbed the colors that I wanted to use or that there was a little bit left and I thought um, would work and I just put them, I glued them all together on a sheet of cardboard and yeah, just added a few extra colors and took that with me. funny thing was I got all this together to take and I really wasn't sure if I would use it or if I'd need it because I it was a quick trip we had some business and I just sort of thought I probably won't use it but the plane ended up being delayed we ended up needing to stay at the airport for a long time so it came in really handy I was so thankful to have this so this is a really as well again an easy way um, you know, if you have had the 238 dot cards, you could do this, or if you just have some watercolors in tubes, you can just squeeze out some dots and I'll show that, um, to you a little bit later. And I'm just kind of showing you through here. Some of these colors are not necessarily ones I have in my palette, but they are ones I kind of my secretary ones I was thinking about and I wanted to try them out anyway. So I thought it would be good to, you know, a good opportunity to try them out. So you can see here in the travels notebook, and I have a whole video how I put this together, but I left pockets at the front and the back, and I actually ended up just putting my boarding pass in the back pocket, and it came in really handy for that. But you could actually also put a little, like a card or a little palette of watercolors in there as well. And then I think as far as I'm gonna show you here, this card again, um, if you don't want to make your own, Bean Paints has one that is just a card full of her watercolors. They're really gorgeous, by the way, and you can just have that mailed to yourself or to someone else. So I think that's a really nice thing as well. This is just a little palette I found in my sister's room, and it's one that she's created for herself just on some watercolor paper. So I really enjoy that those kind of little things. She's always got little plates or little pieces of paper that she's creating uh, little palettes with just small amounts of paint. And then here we're going to go into another Traveler's Notebook that I have a video on how I made. But in the beginning of this, I um, created a another travel palette. So I'll just kind of show you here. This is where I started my sort of watercolor journey after some rocky starts. This is where I kind of went back to it and tried a little bit harder and got um, a little bit more into it. So you can see there I've created a color chart and I have swatched out the palette that I was using at the time. Um, and again, like it was a few rocky starts. I need to actually try and insert a photo of the first floral um, painting that I ever did. It was 
I, I think you guys can do better after watching these videos but um, here these are Holbein paints and so I have created a little dot card here that um, I can take and I have also created these for a few other people I uh, sent them to a few friends and things so uh, and then throughout this book this is kind of like my little color chart um, book this is just the Canson XL paper from Walmart and you can see here how many colors I have tried and this isn't even all of them you know to get to where I am to get to the colors that I like to use today and so this is where my love of Daniel Smith first started these colors are gorgeous this is probably the third or fourth time I've actually swatched them out here and I really liked I, I backwashed a little bit so I just put a drop of water in the swatch and to see how to see how each color blooms and I really enjoy uh, using blooms in the watercolor I think that's one of the sort of magical aspects of it that it can create these beautiful blooms so I really liked doing these swatches And again you can see here this is a schminke dot card so you can send a little dot card to somebody I think it would be really nice um, again it's not it, it's not expected for world watercolor month but I just think in celebration of this month it'd be nice to get you know somebody interested in watercolor who may not have even known about it or known that they were interested or you know it might be a nice time to treat yourself to a couple of colors and I will show you uh, a few ways to do that as well so this is a uh, plastic tin from Walmart and you'll see in a second this has been so well loved so well used so again this is a really affordable and good way to start watercolors or to make palettes for friends you could have a watercolor party or you could make palettes for your kids i think we had the reeves paints in there from michael's and you can get those with a coupon so they're pretty affordable um they just come in a packet of like 20 tubes or something like that so then the other thing is if you're thinking about watercolor but you're not really too sure if it's for you you can get a couple of these specialty colors and put them in a little um you know a little tin that you have some you know from something um and or even like a little ceramic tin would be really nice uh but the special thing about these is they weren't really around or available when i started watercolors so I really love them and um, yeah it's really nice that you could start with a few specialty colors like that gold, holographic gold or something like that but this is another palette this is a metal palette it's I think it's called color around or RTM palette and um, it's again from Amazon the the good thing about this one is the size of the well so if you like to use large brushes and they sometimes are cumbersome to get into the half pans you can get them into these larger pans and it just creates a really nice uh, sort of experience anyway guys that is it for me that is sort of a little tour of our palettes and some ideas for world watercolor month i hope you're having a nice one and um let's paint <laughs> see ya